And it looks like we are now switched over. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. It is Saturday night, anime time. We're here to talk about some anime. How y'all doing? But so far, still doing still all right. Alive. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Cool. Um, all right, let's dig in. We have a doozy of an anime to talk about tonight. Because um, yeah. we're talking about Megazone 2-3 down there. And as you can kind of see in the thumbnail, it is actually spelled out Megazone 2-3. That was one of my discoveries. Um, so um, let me just open it up. A any Anything you all want to lead with? Because boy, do I have thoughts too. <sighs> okay, so... <laughs> Okay, with the mm, that's kind of stretching it for the first part. Second part, I was just kind of like, I'm so glad you said that the character designs were different because I oh, yeah. been like, oh, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I understand. Um, there's there's so much. Oh dear lord, no, there's so much. Oh yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is uh, uh, I think I had said to you guys this is I think the first time all the way through with part one, part two, with English, either sub mm, or dub. Mm -hmm. mm, so yeah. I'm glad to say, again, if you've watched this, I've watched this enough over the last mm. 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm. Yeah. Um, that I put together most of what the heck was going on, mm -hmm. but no joke. I totally legitimately thought part two was their grandchildren. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. Because, it, I mean, it looks visually, I'm like, okay, this is no relation Completely to anybody different. from part one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. It's, it's got to be like a century later. Mm -hmm. Like the, the fight has gone on for a century yeah. again, and now all these people's grandkids are picking up the mantle and moving on. <laughs> then well, they just get, you know, to that point, and I'm like, oh, wow. All right. <laughs> We'll get to part two. Um, I definitely ha oh yeah, I have thoughts about part two. Because um, part one is character designs by Haruhiko Mikimoto, character designer of original Macross and, and other famous things. This is 85, so Macross had come out only a few years earlier, so he was right. hot, uh, you know, the, the hotness. And boy, are these character designs very clearly uh, Mikimoto designs. Um, this Rick, is Rick Hunter and yeah. Yeah. Lynn, Lynn Min May mm -hmm. right there. The Shogo and Yui. Yep. <laughs> I'm just like, yep. oh, okay. Um, Fantastic hair. Yep. <laughs> and it is also very 80s, you know. Oh, um, yeah. Which, spoiler mode, is actually a plot point. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, so, first off, I want to talk about Shogo a bit. Because. Thanks, a jerk. Uh, um, <laughs> people often have problems with male anime protagonists being um, <clears throat> unlikable. Uh, you know, Shinju. No. Um, Shogo, unlikable. Right. Uh, Shoujo sure doesn't um, help a lot. Um, granted, he's the sort of classic dumb teenage boy archetype. Um, yeah. Which is, you know, fine as far as it goes. Um, but then we're we're less than ten minutes in, and he basically steals a highly experimental military prototype, um, hides it with this in in the garage of this girl he knows. Random. Girl, he knows. Girl. girl, he knows. It's not like my best childhood From, friend. It's like yeah, it's literally a, rando girl that mm -hmm. he just gives a bike ride to. Yep. Like, well, well, he remember he almost sure. ran her over and killed her, but right, oh, yeah, you know, that's, 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 that's a good reason to trust a top secret mm -hmm. giant vehicle thing to her garage. <laughs> right, sure, she won't narc you out. Um, you don't even uh, know that, <laughs> right? Um, and then they go on with their lives. Yeah, and they just hang well, out. He dies, his right? Dies, right? In that. And he's like, "Oh, are you guys?" We have to figure out what's going on. I think. 
but yeah. let me talk to this girl that I just got her phone number with. Yeah! And they just, you know, go along with things. Um, and we get some, you know, awesome 80s workout sequences. Um, <laughs> like Jane Fonda workout. Yeah, exactly, very <laughs> much. <laughs> wow. Like, wow, the one 80s workout. Two and one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to be very careful about skipping around in here because it is an OVA. Um, there are certain sequences that I cannot show on YouTube. Um, and so like, they're, they're, they're just, and he's taking the motorcycle thing out on the road. Yeah. He gave it like a new paint well, job, but yeah, I mean, that makes all the difference. Right. right. You know, <laughs> it's not just like the giant freaking machine that nobody else has a copy of. <laughs> Oh, it's not no. obvious in, the, in traffic. Right, <laughs> yes. Because, you know, he's driving down, and again, it's just kind of like, you know, we're going to ignore the awful things that are happening. Yeah. You know, in the it, yeah. We're, we're just going to ignore that. So he's driving this huge thing. I mean, if the thing is like, it's like it takes up a lane. Yeah. He's already crashed a Beamer, and he yeah. has, oh, by the way, oh, hit and run in the first five minutes. Yep. Yeah. He's just kind of like, you know, whatever. Oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, well, and the thing is, so, get- and, and <clears throat> and they, and they, and he's just driving this huge thing, you know. I gotta tell you, if I saw something like that in Baltimore, <laughs> I can tell you, a lot of people would be just be going, hey, what, what, "What's what's that?" You know, yeah. not, not just like not just like, "Oh, I need to get to McDonald's." <laughs> well, the thing that gets me is, you know, Buddy introduces him to to the Bahamut Six, right? And mm-hmm. you get very little, little explanation of what's going on. Yeah, but. I'm just going to have to guess that Shogo is either a rocket scientist idiot kid <laughs> or that this thing is designed for morons. Yeah. No because kidding. Yeah. Think, think of Tetsuo when he gets on Kaneda's <laughs> bike. Yeah. Right? And he's like, he's driving. He's, re- he's like, oh, no. And the bike starts slowing down. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. I must have, I didn't rev it. Right. Oh, wow. Well, mm-hmm. And it starts, right. you know, he starts to slow down. Shogo out of the <laughs> gate. He knows how to drive this thing like a boss. He just <laughs> decimates stuff. He can convert into, you know, mm-hmm. Marlin mode. mode. And he can use the whole sensor package. He I knows mean, the whole damn thing front to back. Even, he had, like, no training. Even <laughs> Amaro. Yeah. He had to read the manual while he was getting, uh, uh, page 58, pull the trigger, press that button. <laughs> you know, Shogo just, just shows on the bike and just turns it on. Says, it's, it's like he's an idiot savant. He just yeah. gets on there and goes, motorcycle, I know yeah. this. Uh, idiot, I'll agree with And he goes on. Uh, <clears throat> and he uses yeah. it for such highbrow purposes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah. Um, so he then, um, I'm not going to be able to find Well, th- there we go. Um, um, he suspects that the girl he's hanging out with is about to... Um, uh, trade herself for certain obligations, um, and then That's a good way of putting it. Beeps on her using the bike sensor through a a wall into a hotel, and I will point out, like, flips through multiple sequence, like looks through multiple rooms, so he knows what he's doing. Um, How you know? What? Right. Um. Uh, and then <laughs> finds out what it is and proceeds to um, literally smash through the door, or through the wall, rather, um, and uh, and rescue her. Um, Boy, what a rescue. Uh-huh. Uh, which, again, you know, it's just the military. It's just, you know, um, super secret government hardware. No <laughs> one's going to come after you. No one's going to notice that. You're not putting her in danger. It's fine. <sighs> there were no witnesses to the right. thing jumping out of a parking garage, <laughs> demolishing the side of a hotel. No, no, no cameras in the parking garage. No. No, yeah. Nobody. The people next door going, what was that? Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Right. It's just some giant machine. That's some idiot savant is <laughs> crashing through the wall because there's some girl that he picked up earlier in the day that he has actually really no, no relationship. Yeah, no, no, not at all. And, he's, and he and he rescues her, and and mm-hmm. you know she's going off on the bike. She's like the first person to actually notice the bike. Yeah, like mm-hmm. you know, she's like, oh my god, this, this is amazing. Da, 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 da. And his response because you know they've been going out for all of nothing, and he turns around and he just 
Yeah. And and he does that, and I'm just like going, I suppose it's a way to win and influence people. I, <laughs> I, I guess. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm just, uh, you know. I'm used to that application when somebody's like panicking, freaking out. You're like, right. settle down. Yeah, no. Nope. Versus like, oh my gosh, you rescued me. I'm so happy. This is great. This, this oh, is like mm-hmm. Sean Connery type, type stuff, you know? Yeah. I check out a little up and they give a little smack and a little. Shackle so, down. You're getting uh, a little <laughs> crazy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't like Shogo very much. Um, uh, whereupon we go to, and this is actually kind of interesting McDonald's. Not McDonald's. <laughs> Like, <sighs> I, I am sure that McDonald's was actually a sponsor of this OVA. Oh, no doubt. Oh, yes. Um, well, see, there's McDonald's, felt like Lucky Strike, strike Heineken, and again. Dunhill oh, cigarettes. Oh, I, I just felt Part like, two, yeah. you know, like, by the end of it, I was just like going, I don't smoke when I'm having a Nicky <laughs> fit. And I, I, I need a drink, and, mm-hmm. and I want to shove a hamburger in my mouth and, and wash it all down with a, with a Coke. <laughs> Or in the happening? Mm-hmm. Um, whereupon they they got on their joy ride and we get our Tokyo Three moment. Um, yep. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's where Eva got it. Gotcha. Giant underground city. Um, yep. And uh, this is the the big reveal that they're actually <coughs> on a generational starship. They're actually going out. They're on the Megazone Two Three. Yep. Um, and out flying. Um. um and uh, again, you know, he gets involved in all of this military combat and is really pissed off that the military wants their own hardware back. Back. Their secret machine he took. <laughs> yeah. Which, which, by the way, he still hasn't figured out what has happened to his friend just yet. Yeah. So yeah. he doesn't know that his friend took a bullet to the head. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, he's just sitting there. I wonder what happened to Shinji. <laughs> yeah, three guys. Well, it, return, why is he not returning my calls? I don't exactly. <laughs> I've been leaving voicemails for like two days. Mm. What's going wrong? Yeah. Um, a, another moment in time where this big like transformation fight scene. How does Shogo know how to target anything? How to use the gun? Mm. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Push what? Push button military. It's amazing. It really is. It's it's, it's awesome. Um, uh, you know, whereupon we have the villain. You know, we're not so different. You and I sequence you know, required by law. Check mark. Um, uh, whereupon exactly. Um, BD. Yeah, great name. BD. BD. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, whereupon again. Um, Shogo just goes back to riding around on his bike. Yep. And just goes back to his regular life, and everything's fine. Everything is cool and whatever. I'm not gonna. He, now, now he's wondering whether to tell everybody and to you know reveal the secret. I I don't know why you would wonder that, but okay. Yeah. Um. Um. Well, he uh, did when he tried to go on Eve's show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. had a little foreshadowing of what was going to be the the path of this. Anytime mm-hmm. he tried to reveal something, yeah. But at the at the same time, like you should kind of sort of realize if something weird has happened before, yeah. And now you've had your big confrontation moment. They're coming to kill you. Yeah. So, so what, yeah. any of the people you hang out with, they're also going to kill. If you really love your friends, don't get them killed. That's so right. There was a. There was a moment mm-hmm. where <clears throat> in in this, and I, for some reason, I don't know why, but I think it was the fact that BD let <laughs> BD let Shogu go. Mm-hmm. And I was like going, and he had this like, inter- BD had this internal monologue about, you know, what was, to, to give us an idea of like, you know, something big was bigger, a bigger picture thing mm-hmm. was happening. And that, if for a second, I thought, oh, Shogu's going to be the guy that they want be the ace pilot right. of this garland thing totally. or, yep. you know whatever and that's and i really thought that and a then hero. it just and, and right a hero and then it just kind of nope. just went away <laughs> and you know and i was like oh, okay we're not going down that way um where are we going with it? why is he moody? why is everybody moody i don't understand <laughs> why is everybody moody and to john's point you know so you you learned all this 
you're questioning what's going to go on. You know, you're going to put all of your, your friends in danger. So how do you respond to that? What, what's the best thing you could possibly do in that situation? Oh, I know. Make a movie about movie. it. <laughs> Over the course of weeks. With all of your friends. And the bike. In and the bike. Places. <laughs> and nobody's coming after the bike no. after the movie. You, you know, I mean, okay. So in real life, you need permits and things like that. Mm-hmm. So there would be a paper trail for the military, for, for BD. <laughs> come in and and find you and knock you in the skull and take your take mm-hmm. like stupid bike back but no they're having fun and maybe i, I don't know maybe bd was just like oh they're just kids i'm having their fun before we have yeah, to deal with the apocalypse yeah. that's coming our way yeah exactly but, let uh, them enjoy themselves before we kill all of yeah them. <laughs> right exactly before cool. we before we do anything with the director by like you know and i I do want to point out, if you notice a lot of the crowd scenes, as much as mm. there's you know, the, the cool mecha action, yeah. in a lot of crowd scenes, you ha- they cheaped some of the crowd scenes to yeah. the extreme, yeah. where it's just side-scrolling static figures. And I was mm. like, oh, come on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's, just, that's a cheap out. Now, in fairness, it's worth pointing out at this point, Megazone 2-3 was originally going to be a TV series. Um, they planned that things changed they decided to make it into a movie so they basically just condensed what they had and i'm sure it reworked a few things so i suspect originally you know by the time we got to this point we were in episode six there had been other things with the military trying to find him he had been you know right. getting away from them all of that had been featuring in the story but that didn't actually get animated yet because it's expensive so we're getting all of the sort of tv animation tricks um and a lot of just the the the, the easier plot if you will uh, which, which is a shame because yeah. i i think that this would actually have if it was made into an actual tv show with the tv show budget i think this mm. actually could have been not anything like on the level of gundam or mm. or macross or you know, you know robotech or anything like that but i think this would have been something that I think people would have sunk their teeth into. I think they yeah. could have made a good story about it. Because, you know, there are elements of it, as, especially when you get into part two, where you're just kind of like, oh, okay, well, this would have been cool if they just didn't do it this way. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and so, it was, yeah, the whole thing was very frustrating. But, um, yeah, when, when you brought up the, it was supposed to be a TV series, I was just like, well, that actually explains a lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the the plotting in general is just kind of um, uh, confusing. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, um, just a way to that's a way to put you it. Know, just <laughs> motivations, just all that stuff, just doesn't really come together. Background, um, background exactly. you know, some little bit of background mm-hmm. on people here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like I, I enjoyed what I saw of the movie. I liked a lot of the mm-hmm. pacing. I liked a lot of the scenes. I liked hanging out with the girls in their room and getting a getting a feel for who they were, understanding all that. Um, it kind of worked. Um, and then of course they kill all of them uh, uh, at the end of part one. And as I think I mentioned somewhere else, you know, Shogo's all like, "Those bastards!" It's like you couldn't see this coming, really. <laughs> Well, I like the fact that, you know, Shogo goes off and Eve is... Eve, sorry. Yui. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yui is left there, like, on the phone in the apartment where Tomomi's dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, we don't see any cleanup. We don't see anything going on. We just see Mai being like, oh, boo-hoo-hoo, my daddy called me home. I'm leaving. Bye. Mm -hmm. Deal with the body. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) did... Yeah, it, it, was, it, was like, it was like it was, it was like did we just throw like it just take the curtain off the window and just throw yeah, it the body and just go we're gonna pretend that lump is something else. <laughs> Get the big push broom out, just push her into the closet, shut the door. Yeah. You're like, the That's fine. take care of it. It's yep. fine. And where are the police? Mm-hmm. Well, now, and again, now Brent, that you said it was going, they were gonna do a TV series. It's like there's entire like chunks of stuff that obviously police are called then there's like mm-hmm. oh nothing ever happened we didn't file a police report and you know mm-hmm. a bunch of other stuff that would occur in there conspiracy flesh stuff out yeah yep. and it's just like instead it's death and we're on the phone bye mine <laughs> and now we move on yeah <laughs> like, 
Um, Call callous disregard for your friend being murdered <laughs> exactly. in your apartment. Yeah. Um, now I, I will say, you know, a lot of the um, uh, the mecha animation sequences in this are really you know, gorgeously done. Yeah. Um, and I, I think one of the things, well, um, one of the things a lot of people talk about again, it's hard to scrub through this. Um, oh, <laughs> One of the things a lot of folks um, love about uh, about Mecha Zone is that Mecha action animation, which is definitely you know up there. It is it is top tier mid eighties Mecha animation. Um, yeah. It's smooth. It's exciting. It's it's interesting. Um, the problem is you know there's so much other stuff going on um, that all of that is just kind of feels kind of crammed in, frankly to the rest of the story. And again, I think if it was a TV series and everything was balanced more, it would have, would have right. fit better. Yeah. Well, the whole cracking, you know, getting past level six, mm -hmm. then moving on to level seven mm -hmm. and trying to crack that to break, you know, the Eve system apart so that they could get on with their development. Mm -hmm. They, they, where in the heck does the Bahamut six come into any of that? It's their latest gizmo toy, mm -hmm. but it's like they sort of indicate that that's like a key component thing that they need yeah and yet at the same time it's it's not, not a key component because right. they crack level seven yeah well and it, it's just like it, it's like if you had a tv series it might explain what the hell's going on mm -hmm. because it seemed like it was like two competing like things that were going on like they wanted to crack eve and take over well obviously they wanted to crack eve so they could take over the ship right but at the same time they were trying to fight off the other ship, as, as mm -hmm. we find out, you know, the, the, the enemy. The dissolve and, or whatever they are. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and it just seemed like they were at odds with each other. And BD. But it's just, <laughs> you know, he just, you know, he's trying to do both of these things at the same time. And, you know, I just love how he just orders the, the, the computer programs. Needs to be done in three hours or we're screwed. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, like, you know, I don't know okay. if the programmer just went, Okay, <laughs> you know, and and it just seemed like competing interests because I would think with like, okay, if you're going to war with this other ship, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you don't need to worry about Eve at this point. Mm -hmm. Maybe Eve might actually help you. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. sort of have, have a we figured have, 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 have out <laughs> right? You know, mm -hmm. and so I just don't understand why what why they were doing that. And then, as you point out, Garland has nothing to do with Eve mm -hmm. except for in part two when it serves only as a cell phone for Shogu <laughs> exactly. to get the message yeah. from Eve, hey, come on in mm -hmm. after six freaking months. Yep. You know, yeah. like, I've been trying to call you, but you know, <laughs> where's the garland? Oh, uh, broke it in some other shaft somewhere. You know? Yeah. I, I just <laughs> leave it smashed in a hole and then wander <laughs> off. Like, <laughs> I was I was concussed. I, I wasn't. Really thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, and BD was clearly meant to be the the, the pilot villain, right? He was the char of the yeah. show. He was going to be the one that you know he's fighting with. And then I think it became clear, you know, again just through through plotting, you didn't really have space for another villain. So he becomes you know the other. He becomes the bad guy. And he doesn't have the personality for that. He's just not interesting in and of himself. He's interesting as this sort of, um, and you can certainly do some interesting parallels, right? He's, he's kind of Shogo if he had gone to the military, potentially. He is, you know, you, you yeah. can do all that, that fun stuff. Um, but n now that he's suddenly the commander of everything, you're like, well, wait, why are you doing that? And what is, what, why do you, why do you want Shogo to, okay, yeah. so here's the, here's the thing with, with BD and this, and this, mm. and, you know, the idiot savant Shogo. So Shogo is just, you know, he knows how to do the bike thing, because mm. it's just, you know, whatever. And I mean, he can push he, buttons. <laughs> he can push buttons. He, he's an intelligent monkey, what can I say? Yeah. And, and he, he gets on the bike, he's able to do all this stuff, and for this, for like, for both parts, for the better part of, of, the first movie, he's able to just get away, fool everybody, wipe the floor mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. And BD, you know, seems like these, like this, you know, like like there's gonna be this big climatic battle scene, you know, where where he does the Rambo thing and Shogo puts on the, the <laughs> yeah. whatever it says on there. Mm -hmm. 
and he gets his butt whooped. Oh, yeah. He, BD is just like, going, I've got an invasion going on. I'm trying mm-hmm. to deal with Eve over here. And for some reason, I'm obsessed with you. Um, we can't have guns in here, but I'm inside of Eve computer but yeah. you know we'll have this giant three-story tall lightsaber battle yeah and i'm then i'm just gonna you know, backhand you like your amaro and then <laughs> continue with mm-hmm. this invasion that's going on and then at the end you're just like going well, what's the point of all that yeah mm-hmm. there's no clue i mean i mean yeah. seriously in that scene he just gets his hand his butt handed to him mm-hmm. and, I, and i love you know the, the old, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm gonna use whatever I find to get well, myself out of this. BD hole. could ha- at that moment, Shogo is like completely floored. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? There's like yeah. he is yeah. not getting back up from this. These are down for the count. Bahamut Six was so important to these people, right? And yet, now you know BD's done the thing. He has beaten Shogo. It is time to be like, okay, if I'm not gonna kill you, I'm gonna pop you out of that thing. And I'm going to take that back to the research boys and say, we got it back. Mm-hmm. And leave Shogo on the express elevator to the roof. Nope. He just throws no, him in the shaft. And is like, the sh- I did the thing. And like, dude, you wanted that. Get, yeah. get that. You, you made a big point of being 50, year behind, 50 years behind technologically. And this was supposed to be your 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 stopgap or your, or your bridge to yeah. that. And, it, and it's just like, I'm not going down there to grab it. <laughs> exactly. Nuts to that. No, you know, you know why should I do that? Um, I kicked a little brat's ass, so I'm just going to keep on going here. And, and here's the problem, you know, one of the, one of the many, many problems. Um, <laughs> part one ends with this big epic scene of Shogo, you know, walking and feeling frustrated and then moving on his own power. He has clearly, you know, grasped the shonen will to live and is powering through his pain. He has not earned that in any way, shape, or form. No. So I'm watching that thinking, I, um, just just fall down. It's fine. I, I it, just, just bleed out on the street. I'm okay. <laughs> well, uh, did you notice the fact that he comes up, like, out of some random hole in the ground, mm-hmm. and he appears on the street, yep. the busy Tokyo street. Mm-hmm. The street teeming there. with people and teeming with cars and all kinds of activity. Oh, yep. <laughs> it's just like you're, around. You're, I'm sorry. When I'm walking down the street and I see someone <laughs> bleeding from their face and using a thing, and they're just like literally just dragging their like useless like behind them, and it's hanging by like maybe a ligament, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, he'll be okay. He just needs a band yeah. aid. Yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. It's no fun. worries. But in how and many then, other and, and you, shows do you have somebody come by and be like, "I show boo," you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then, uh, you, get, don't and then worry you have the impression. Then you have the impression as he goes through the montage. And then you're just like, "Oh, he's gonna go back to Yui." Mm-hmm. Right. And then we get part two. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Then we get part two. All right. All right. <laughs> Yes, okay. We do. Uh, um, so, part two was one of the most schizophrenic experiences I've had watching anime. Um, for several reasons. Um, one of them being the fact that it has not only a completely different director, they got a completely different character designer to redesign all the characters. And when I say redesign all the characters, I mean, they went with, well, there's Silverhawks. We'll get back to that. Um, <laughs> I, they, I knew I was in a bad way. You, missed, you that. missed Glam and Dump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, wow. We really, really worked out the uh, 1980s name. Glam. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they got... <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's such that's a, that's a terrible, terrible <laughs> shot. <laughs> um, Sweat drivulet running down his head and the hair bloop, like ah. Oh. So they got um well um <laughs> they got <laughs> Nobuo uh, Uematsu who uh, I'm sorry not Nobu, Nobuo Uematsu that's that's the that's the wrong Uematsu sorry um uh they they got the character designer who go on to do Mezzaforte and Kite. Um, who is very well known for having a very distinctive art style. Um, 
which does not match the original at all. Uh, you know, that's BD no. there. And that's Yui. Like, you yeah. flashed by Yui. There, I mean, could you even possibly have just started this <laughs> off to, like, sort of make the sort of incongruity of the whole thing I, and be like, yeah. oh, they changed their <laughs> image entirely to hide from <laughs> something. They, they had plastic surgery, and now they all look fantastic. Yeah. You know? <laughs> No, what? honest, honest to God, it, it makes the grandchildren it thing does. seem right. It, does. It, it really does. It's Absolutely. just like because I, I, I well, first of all, when I saw the Silverhawks and you know, yeah. the, you know, Lion O and whatnot, and I was yeah. just like, oh no, oh no, oh dear God, no. <laughs> more product. Play. And <laughs> yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And um, and I was just like, going well, pinball machines. All right, that's that's even better. That's just. And then we have the guy, the Air Force guy from whatever what was that game uh 80s game um combat you know like um contract mortal combat mortal oh, Kombat street fighter like that street, street fighter, fighter yeah so like because the, the one guy from the from the great gang called trash yeah, yeah. um the leader of trash <laughs> was looked like the, the air force guy from one of the from one of those games mm. i think his name mm. was lightning I think that was his name yeah was. lightning yeah. glam <laughs> Oh. It's oh, oh, it's Shogo and Yui. Yeah, and it's the other, mm-hmm. and all the rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cindy Lauper, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the the emo girl. I don't mm-hmm. know what her name was. Not Naya or whatever it was. I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cindy Lauper with the uh, who, uh, with the Annie Potts voice from uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't listen to her talk without dying. <laughs> that <laughs> like, was just hilarious. Oh, I I must have listened to that dub. Oh, that oh, that dub was awful. Us. Mm. Oh, you could switch the language on there. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, I listened to the English dub, and I was just kind of like, you, you know, just should have listened to the Japanese dub. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, because you know they they were just like going. Right, totally right. Oh, that's so mm. cool. Look what we did. And then, you know, there's the huge, you know, bike scene, gang by gang versus the police. And, mm-hmm. you know, which, you know, I, I maybe I'm just jaded, but I think the police would have, you know, just said, hey, witnesses? Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Open up. Yeah, um, there would have been a lot more have, but, shooting but the, from the police. But, well, right? and so, Japanese and so police the gang though. wins, and Chogo at the end of it, he's sitting on his bike. And he yells triumphantly, mm. "Score!" Mm-hmm. Okay, that that that's not a brave heart moment. Okay, and no, and, and, and here's no. the thing: like again, you know, what are they trying to accomplish? Right. Um, Mayhem. <laughs> you know, given everything that's going on, um, it it just feels like a really odd choice. Um, um, but it features all of the characters. It laid does. out yeah. in panoramic view, mm-hmm. in uh, in crisp animation that yep. you go, oh look, they're a fantastically stylish biker gang. Mm-hmm. One of, of them looked like a der- the big guy reminded me of a deranged looking John Candy, honestly. Okay. Sort of. Um, I gotta say, three years after this, there was another anime work to um, prominently feature. Um, motorcycle mayhem, and there's really yeah, and there, right. I, I again, f- full credit. I think they may have pulled some of their their influence from this movie. It feels very close, um, like the clown boss who yeah. looks like a giant <laughs> yeah. dude, right? Yep. Um, and again. To be clear, the Akira manga had been going on for a while. I'm sure, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that they, like, cribbed it. But it does look like they, you know, Megazone 2, 3 comes out and they're like, oh, that's how to get that across. Let's use that as, as a basis point. Um, with a bunch of characters dial, you don't care about. it away from the horrible 1980s thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, then you get all the, okay. So... The other problem here is 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 characters. Um, Amongst many, <laughs> yeah. Um, Amongst many, um, they jump to part two. Shogo. Uh, so we have two things going on. Um, there's the 
the enemy, which now has metal tentacle monsters, basically, yeah. technology. That yeah. was actually the, the only decent part of this whole thing. But I yeah, think was was. which I will I will spare you the visuals because they are grotesque. <laughs> um, but basically, they can get in and infect your ship and cause tentacles to come out, metal tentacles yeah. to come out and, and destroy you. Which, by the way, when I saw that, I was like, oh, well, you're done. Like, you can't shoot that away. You're, you know, they've won. Um, yeah, except for the, I love the giant ship is called the FX. Yeah. <laughs> like FX something or other. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, am I supposed to understand that this is special? It's special FX. Oh! Yeah! I got that there. Uh, nice. Um, but they have the the Galak, whatever they are, whatever, mm. whatever the heck the enemy's name is. Mm. Um, Desalk. The Desalk okay. ship yeah. flies in front of the bridge, mm. and then you see this little shield thing, and they're like, oh, yeah. the reporter worked. worked. And it's mm-hmm. like, where the hell was that when the yeah. other ships were getting like, completely, <laughs> right, yeah. totally mm-hmm. destroyed? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. they're little... The salt ships are landing on them and bawling their pilots apart. It's like, why did you turn that on? Is this like a thing that you don't turn on for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we were really curious about the, you know, the, the cable tentacle things because they seem to go after eyeballs and brains. Yeah. Right? We're yeah. just trying to figure that one out. So and I, I love the I love the follow up with her where BD's watching. Yeah. The apparently <laughs> black box video. Yeah. And the black box camera follows. Everything exactly, exactly like, like you just saw it like a few minutes ago. I'm yeah, like, a different I hue. I think that's how black boxes work like that. Yeah, <laughs> and also torture porn. Um, yeah. Turns out, so this is directed by Noboru, I'm sorry, by um, Ichiro Itano, um, legendary anime director uh, known for the Itano Circus, the, the missile effect you've seen. Yeah. Um, and he directed a few things, Gantz, if you've heard of that. Um, apparently, and so the mecha animation of this is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of that is just flawless work. Yeah. Um, he always wanted to. He worked on Gundam and Ideon, a lot of those Tomino series. This is what he wanted to do in those TV shows. He lobbied. He wanted to show grotesque death in those movies. He said that's what war is like, and we, you know, we should portray that in things. And the uh, apparently TV station said no. Um, well, you see, we have these nine-year-old kids, and we don't really want them to have nightmares of seeing their eyeballs just fall as the you know cabin of their you know, their, their little mecha goes below. And, and in, you know, in fairness, and, you know, like they, they do that in Macross briefly. Um, they do it in Idion in the movies, um, Idion movies, but um, this very much. Oh, those okay. <laughs> tangent moving back um um the problem is it feels like itano wanted to do this and so he does it over and over again and it's almost like he's letting it out and so the sequence just goes on and on of people getting mutilated over and over and it just feels you know like too much and then as you say john and then three minutes later let's watch it all again (laughs) It's like, oh. Um, it's almost like the, look what I did. See how good that is? Look <laughs> how that happened. See how all this laid out? You really should appreciate what I've done here. Uh-huh. Yes, we got you. Uh, you. Can you just see the animators doing this? So watching the storyboards, like looking at the storyboards and going, okay, so we're going to draw. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Honey, what you do today? Drew somebody's. Eyeball coming out of their heads. Rabbits, oh. rabbits. I was drawing rabbits. Rabbits. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> that's what I kept telling myself. It was rabbits. Um, yeah, and then our our biker gang, along with Cindy Lauper, go out, uh, and, and and then you have the whole Yui plot line where she's learning to ride a bike. Yeah. So that she could ride a bike later on. Okay, great. That was useful. Um, well, and and it's. She uh, uh, again. She's another slightly idiot savant because yeah. she's just oh. learning to ride the bike within like an hour, and and let's just strap some grenades to the gas tank and fire a machine gun and a rocket launcher and, from the back of that bike. And they explicitly what? say it's been three days since she first learned to, to ride a bike. Yeah. 
when they go they out on that, that race. pilot effectively. <laughs> they really wanted to see a lie. There was a moment when, mm-hmm. when I realized the ridiculousness of what I was watching at that point. Mm-hmm. I really wanted a Pee Wee Herman moment. She just guns it and just, just hits the wall. <laughs> that would have been funny. Absolutely. Um, and that's the weird thing, is that this is such an odd story. Um, it's such an odd set of, of things going on. And it's treated so seriously. You know, they really think you're going to care about this random biker gang that's smoking Lucky Strikes and drinking Asahi beer and Budweiser and drinking Coca-Cola. And Heineken. And Heineken, and Heineken Dun- thank you. And Dunhill cigarettes. And yeah, and, you know, right on the packages, all that. I mean, it's, yeah. corporate sponsorship was very clear. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and they're apparently, because the little round glasses, red spiky hair guy, right. mm-hmm. they apparently are also... Uh, uh, encryption crackers. Yep. Super and uh, wiretapping, eavesdropping, super, super, like, techno people. If there's huh. one thing I've learned from 80s movies, it's that every motorcycle gang has a super hacker in it. Apparently. You know? It's just, it's, it's how Job it works. Job requirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we finally meet Eve. Where... Eve apparently can bring people back from the dead. Yep. Mm-hmm. The fully functional med bay in something that is the computer core <laughs> of a freaking giant computer. But there's just conveniently a medical bed. Yeah. It's, oh, like, it's they, like when they were they putting thought it of together. everything. <laughs> Pretty much. It, it, truly. They, they were putting this together. Okay, we're going to make this super AI that's going to take care of these multi generational, you know, while the earth is healing, we're going to do this. Isn't this the, the, the AI, AI core? Yeah. Why are we putting a, a med bed in here? Mm-hmm. Just in case. What, what What if one of us trips and hits our head? Right, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Good mm-hmm. enough for me. Let's put that med There's bed There's a lot in of there. tubes and wires and things in yeah. here. Very dangerous. <laughs> put that med bed in, and that way we'll all be safe. <laughs> okay. It's an OSHA requirement. Right, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, and then... <sighs> Eve decides she's not just going to explain what's going on. She's going to go through this whole montage sequence. <laughs> and it's just... Can, who designed you? Like, like, why was this the most efficient method of communication? Um, and, and how is you, Eve in the tube talking to Shogo? Mm-hmm. And then lights, you know, lights out, mm-hmm. out of the tube, and somehow, there's nothing in this room. Yeah. Nothing in this room. She creates a table that Shogo mm. can hit. Yeah. I'm like, well, how, and, why? And, and, and how is she manipulating she... matter like this? OSHA. Um... Yeah. OSHA. <laughs> OSHA required table to go to med, med bed. Med bed. Uh... Um, it's, but, you know, and, and why I was... Chogo, the chosen one. That's honestly. the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, she's asking him, well, don't you want to grow up? And he goes on this whole litany of things of why he wants to be a freaking man child. Yeah. And at that point, if I was the Eve trying to figure out whether or not to save these people, I would have been like, oh, well, you clearly did not give me a good reason. Yeah. Exactly. To the <laughs> Off into space, you all go. <laughs> there you go. That's Enjoy the cold vacuum. That's the thing, is that this whole sequence goes along, and I'm like, I, I there's nothing heroic going on here. There's nothing to make me care about this character. Um, and it just goes on for 9,000 hours. Um, it's nice dancing. It's nice dancing, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, and then, um, okay, so more fights, more stuff. BD gets his head blown off. Yeah. Um, which again, thank you, anticlimax. Um, uh, um, it just kind of the plot just kind of stops. Um, whereupon we get our big sort of apocalyptic ending. Um, our, di- our Daikon Four ending. Our, exactly, very much. <laughs> Daikon Four ending. Um, and one of the frustrating things here is that, and maybe I just completely missed this, but. 
I don't know what the Megazone 2 3 looks like. So they kept cutting very confusing. So they kept cutting to external shots of things happening yeah. and stuff going on. I was like, well, is are they in danger or is that the th- I I don't know. Um clearly the only it's indication you have is like the spaceport mm-hmm. is sitting in the crater of like a brown lump. Yeah. So I'm gonna <laughs> guess that that's what Megazone must look like on the exterior. It must mm-hmm. look like just a giant asteroid. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the Desalk, their ship is like some kind of crazy liquid metal wacky land. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ooh, pretty much. Man. But it's apparently allergic to rainbows. Yeah, because at the end I guess. it goes all rainbow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, why did they do that? It's, it's very odd. Um, yeah. It was it, it was very confusing, and I was just like going, okay, so. Everyone gets into this like pod, mm-hmm. and things are blowing up. And Adam, we never see Adam; we just see this like big, you know, icon Adam, mm-hmm. and yeah. he's just you know wiping the floor with everybody. And somehow Eve is able to protect them because Shogu learns his lessons to want to be the like the people he respected as adults. I guess. I guess. And 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 so then you know the the so where everyone is in the pod, I guess, yeah, is shot out, and and then it shows the pod going towards Earth, and I was like, no, that's Tatooine. <laughs> it looked totally like Star Wars at that point mm-hmm. when when R two D two is yeah, CPR, right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I was just like going, oh, why? What well, we never we never learn who gets actually selected. Yeah. Because oh, no. that pod, it was while big. while it's big, we got to watch when when the atom program activates and mm-hmm. the moon weapon system starts destroying both ships. Mm-hmm. We we see people who are in traffic trying to get to shelters. Yeah, and they're all dying. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, so are you telling me the biker gang yes. who attacked the central core? They're the only people who made this. The inheritors, this fear alive. so. The inheritors of the earth are. Totally bad, dude. So I, I mean, and, and, I and also you. genetically not varied enough to repopulate the planet like without horrible mutation and, problems. And, and no, no survival skills whatsoever. No, what are yeah. they gonna do? Eat bark. <laughs> what a beautiful planet! Can I get a ham, a ham sandwich? <laughs> where, where do we get? Show go. You used to work at McDonald's. Whip us some food. There we go. Hey. Hey, where's our Budweiser? Oh, crap. Is there where's a gas station okay. around here we could fill up the bikes? No <laughs> more Lucky Strikes. What do you mean that was the last cigarette? <laughs> this is what frustrated me, is that, you know, the, the movie ends, and for some reason I can't uh, uh, move around here. Uh, you know, the movie ends, and I'm like, so these people inherit the Earth. This is, this is humanity from now on. This, this, this biker gang that decided to drive directly into a giant, you know, uh, police barricade and get themselves killed. Um, not the soldiers who were trying to protect the Megazone. Yep. Who were... I, I can't figure out in what way the soldiers as a group were evil. They overthrew the government. So that that was it. Sure. Well, you you'd know, think, goes, after, it, it you'd think after you defended the Megazone, you could work out the nitty gritty. <laughs> okay. yeah. The highly advanced other society that was going to use <clears throat> tentacle monsters to kill everybody. Mm-hmm. If the military could have handled that, then maybe afterwards you guys could have a general election. Maybe. Just. Uh... It, well, you know, it, it was. You know, it was, I think it had to do with Shogo's the whole diatribe about how adults screw up the world. They lie. And, yeah. and, and they'll think. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, Unlike like because Shogo. you're doing so much better exactly. with your biker gang that gets drunk and plays Thundercat pinball. And if you become the inheritors of the earth. By the way, you know, um, soldiers who lie, what did you do for the first 20 minutes of part one? <laughs> just saying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it would also have been nice, you know, with the whole level seven operator thing mm-hmm. when Eve shows the little, oh, the societies, they had to leave Earth and the, mm-hmm. these city ships and they split apart. And now the, the trajectories brought them back together. It's like they had that moment where it's like, they're people like us. It's like, and did you try talking to them? Yeah. Right? 
Mm -hmm. like, instead of like, shooting at people, have you opened a dialogue? They're people, too. If you guys are coming back towards the Earth, how about this? It's a big planet. The planet's healed. You can all settle on either side of the place. Yeah. It's going to take a long time before you meet up or even communicate again. So, but no. Cataclysmic fighting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. That's the solution. But, Mankind yeah. has learned its lesson <laughs> from the disastrous war that apparently destroyed Earth. <laughs> like, and, great. So, my whole thing about Megazone 23, the actual Megazone itself, mm. is, you know, basically encapsulated Tokyo, whatever. And it's, you know, they'd explain how they're stuck in the 80s mm -hmm. because that was when the oh, most peaceful, peaceful time oh, on all time on Earth. Yeah. What are, which, what, what, I, okay, I, ignore I, that. I, and in fairness, for the Japanese, maybe, you know, if you're yeah. creating a Japanese arcology, all right, fine. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, let me tell you something. If, 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 the, if the big ship was encountering another ship and with these horrible tentacle things that seem to go into your brain and out your yeah. eyes. And that's what you're fighting against. And then you're going up the moon, which is weaponized, called Adam, and he decides he, you don't deserve to live. Yeah. I would have, if I was BD, I would have gotten to the, the control bridge of that whole thing and just said, oop. Let's turn around. Let's go around. <laughs> We've got a city we're happy with. Mm -hmm. Things are going okay. We've been peaceful for about 500 years. we got food. We've got water. Mm -hmm. We've got all this stuff. We even got an 80s pop idol. Yeah. Hey. Exactly. That makes so everybody happy. why don't we just go away? Let's mm -hmm. just forget about all this and just go away. Because I can't even fathom the fact that this little runt Shogu and his biker gang who should have really named themselves the Thundercats instead of trash <laughs> are going to be the inheritors of the earth. I can't, I'm, I know I'm harping on Well, this, the, the gang is named you know, after the qualities of Shogo's character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <sighs> I just would have turned that puppy around. It just went like, yeah. okay, you know, I, and, and, and BD has already killed enough people to like keep the whole thing secret and you know mm -hmm. I, I've been hey Shogo come here you did a great job get you and and this is the thing is that done, done yeah again if this had been all explained out I'm sure that was all in the backstory somewhere um but it it's just not um <laughs> it's just and, and where is BD going with his loyal men to fight them just <laughs> There's nothing it, to fight. Imagine what you know, I just said. Like, he just flies what... off. <laughs> like, I don't I, think I love how you... those things are probably rated to descend. Mm. So you're stuck out there. And there's nothing out there. Mm. So I love how he that says, a heroic death? I love sort how of? he says, we're probably not going to meet again. And uh, and then they blast off and I'm going to go like, uh. he, he has that whole speech of, you know, we're the old way and we know mm. nothing better. Look, dude, you got again. You have an entire metropolis. Just, just turn around, go away. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Well, and this is. And, and meanwhile, we <laughs> learned how useless the garland is. Well, yeah. and, and this is the thing is that you know I um you know, I'm I'm sitting here and thinking okay you're on you know, again you're the military you're on a generational starship you're the only defense of the generational starship other than Eve which is this mysterious thing that. For some reason, no one left the user manual for. Yeah. And so <laughs> you're sitting there. You get attacked by these advanced military ships 50 years ahead of you. And so you are being unacceptably terrible people by developing higher advanced technology to fight those off and not tell the peaceful people about right. all of this. Who, by the way, were supposed to be peaceful because you agreed with Eve doing what Eve did. And then, you know, the government's trying to keep this a secret from everybody. Which, you know, arguable, but whatever. And then... Our protagonist hates them for no reason I can tell. You know, it's like... And, and then, you know, Eve is basically like, Oh, no, no, no. Don't fight these people. And it's like, well, they're trying to kill us. Like, I, I, I love to not fight them, but they have yeah. horrible metal, technical things. 
you, you know, I don't see how the soldiers were, were doing things that made no sense. Um, you know, and, and this, 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 you know, I would have loved to see that version of Mega Zone 2-3. Yeah. Where, yeah. you know, Shogo is pulled into this thing and the soldiers are like, this sucks. Like, this is a really tough situation. We're doing the best we can. Eve is this weird mystery. If you can make that work, great. But we're rock, rocking a hard place. What do we do? But no, they're the evil villains because gur adults. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's what I was saying earlier, is that there's enough here that it, it, I wish they did make it a TV series because yeah. so much could explain it. Actually, it would have been yeah. neat to, to draw into and there would have been interesting character backstories. There would have been, like, like the two friends who wind up joining the military. You see them mm-hmm. do it in yeah. line and doing an interview and saying something stupid. And then off they go, and you know that they're dead by tentacle, right? Yeah. Death by tentacle. But we eye. never see them again. Oh, so again, like, right. In a TV series, you could have had mm-hmm. a nice little segue into there about their struggles. Maybe, right. you know, they're put upon and they somehow communicate to Shogo, which fuels his fury. Mm-hmm. Something. Yeah. And then, and then there's, that, there's that weird conceptual idea of the military arms, the... the the arming, the arm manufacturing, yeah, of, of yeah. the military, and they're just like, ha ha ha, we're gonna make all this money because of this war, ha ha ha, and then there's nothing else, and you're just like going, as it not going my mic, <laughs> and you're just like, <laughs> you go throw the mic out the like, window, what's wrong oh, with you? I can't do it anymore. <laughs> no, um, but you know, they, they just, you know, it's it's just like, okay, do we hate the adults because of the military? Do we hate the adults because they're taking money even though they know that they're see, and that was the other part is that they knew that they were losing the war yeah and they're like uh yeah so what we'll, we'll work out in the end we'll make some type of peace on our own and then we'll still make money and it's just like going no oh, that's not how world war works <laughs> that's 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 ask the losing side of any war that doesn't yeah. that's not how it works mm-hmm. yeah yeah um it's a shame um i actually just finished watching Toshio Okada's uh, video on Grave of the Fireflies, which is a whole other thing. Oh. But he talks about how um, um, some creators create a lot of complexity that's obvious on the surface, and other creators create things that are where they leave so much for the audience to understand, and for the audience to, or not, not to understand, but to sort of scrape out of clues that the audience thinks it's dumb and ridiculous. Or, they, or they, they don't see any of the subtlety, rather. Um, I think Megazone 2-3 is kind of like that, where there's clearly stuff going on, there's clearly plot, and I'm sure if you're just watching this and you're just accepting it and absorbing it, it's fine. Um, you know, it's kind of standard tropes. But I just wish that some of that stuff was either more on the surface or they had tried to be a little more subtle and not just done, yeah. you know, biker gang attacks for 20 minutes. Right. Uh, it's, it's a shame. A, it, and again, having watched this, you know, having ha- actually, I've, just, I've got the VHS copy down. Nice. So I, like, <laughs> rub it, I rummaged around and found it. Yeah. Um, from the days of dealer tables and mm. eons ago where you just didn't ask questions, it was available. Yep. Um, <laughs> the, you, you can piece together the story better not understanding anything that's going on yeah then you actually can with an explanation <laughs> of what's going on because the explanation don't explain anything mm-hmm. and if you just sort of infer from the activity going on then it's like okay it makes much more sense so mm-hmm. you know part one the parents have this thing they discover this great mystery and they're being lied to and deceived mm-hmm. and this disaster looming on the horizon part two the grandkids inherit this angry fury at being mm. deceived and, and put upon by this, you know, pop idol that they love and revere for some reason, even though it's deceiving them. Mm. And here comes the disaster, and they're the only ones, pure of spirit, pure of heart, and full on friendship, and they survive. Mm. That's a great plot. Yep. And then they ruin it by having actual <laughs> talking and telling. <laughs> Damn it. And sex wax inherits the earth. Yeah, Doctor yeah. John, way man, you way to go with that. Uh, like Kaneda's jacket. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like the little pill. Very much so. Um, Good for health, bad for education. <laughs> hey, there we are. <laughs> um, 
uh, yeah, it's just, it's really frustrating. Um, yeah. And again, gorgeous animation. This is mech animation, all that kind of stuff. Just more of that, please. Yeah. Um, uh, and definitely and I like the, I like the hint at the end that there's a road. That's true. That's like, yeah. Okay, there's a road. There looks like there's some structural remnants. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that road, in one scene as they sweep, leads to a bridge. Mm, and like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, you can have a road 500 years later. It's just going to be pot-marked bits and pieces of concrete. Yeah. But you're not going to get a bridge mm -hmm. over things right. standing for 500 years. Mm -hmm. So something's going on. Yep. <laughs> and mm -hmm. we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so it's it's weird. And it, it's also hard for me because Megazone 2 3 is um, such a beloved, such a storied OVA. Um, and partly because it was only available through, you know, VHS trading and dealer's rooms and so yeah. forth. Um, yep. And then finally, this was released by, I think, ADV back in the day. Um,. Uh, or not even back in the day, fairly rec recently. And um, it's tough because I just, I really didn't like it. I just didn't like it. Um, I like parts of it, but it was just really, really rough. Um, partly because in, um, Spirit Koita in the, in the chat room is pointing out that, um, talking about media control and things along those lines. And I agree, it does touch on that. The problem is because it doesn't really explore that theme yeah it's just kind of this plot point it doesn't really leave me with much to think about um because there's really nothing that happens as a result of it, it doesn't really have any it doesn't really have the consequences um well shogo tries once he tries yeah. once to get on eve's show and he's like mm -hmm. look here's the you know and it's mm -hmm. like okay so that would have been a perfect point yep. to be like yeah fully control the media you know this mm -hmm. is what's this, this but it's like no, it just sort of moves along. Yeah. It goes and sees the computer doing the thing, mm -hmm. and then just things move along. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, and? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, anyway, um, but yes, that is Megazone 2-3. Um, it's definitely an interesting experience. Again, you dial that clock back, and it was fantastic oh, yeah. to see something of that nature no question you know and certainly part one having watched robotech mm -hmm. and then yeah. seen seen the robotech characters the macross characters in part one and i was like oh it's it's got to be something like along the same arc I'm like mm -hmm. no <laughs> <laughs> no it is not not yeah. quite yeah part it had two. It, oh part it two's just... got to be more goodness oh <laughs> uh, no <laughs> That's a hard no. More tentacles, but so, mm, <laughs> not more plot. It was. It had so much. It, it just had a lot of promise. I could see that it could have been like you know, <laughs> it could have been really something like you know, and and here's the other part of it is is you know, I usually you can see people cosplay elements or <clears throat> make models or you know costumes around like suits and things like that. I've seen nothing from Megazone. Like, I, it, yeah. until you guys introduced this to me, I knew nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Like, zip, nada. Yeah. And um, so I, it just it just has no impact just because the potential was, I feel, wasted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while there was a gorgeous animation for the for the Mecha, that was definitely true. And for the, the apocalyptic scene at the end when, mm. the, when the Eve yeah. ship yeah. is falling apart and all that kind of stuff where they ramped up the frames per second... I thought that was amazing, mm -hmm. but all the rest of it, I was just like, uh, "I'm out of whiskey, and I don't know how <laughs> else to cope with this thing." And you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it, it, it was just, it was just this very. It's not often that I come across something. I don't hate it, by the way. Yeah, just for everybody out there, there there's nothing to hate about this. Mm -hmm. It's just very disappointing. Yeah. I think is what the word. Well, and I think something, something is collectively out there in the ether. Because within the last six months, mm. I've seen Garland figures show up huh. from Megazone. Interesting. Now, mind you, they really? are ridiculously expensive. Mm -hmm. Sure. But, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's one of those things you just, you know, 
Valkyries you see, all you know, Macross related stuff, all mm-hmm. the different series of Macross, all the different you know mecha from that. And it's like over all the years, I've never seen a Garland, and all of a sudden this thing pops up. And piece they have is articulated Shogo that mm. the back opens up, and you can put it. It's I mean, it's fantastic. If I can afford it, I'd get it. <laughs> but it's the only time I've ever seen Mecha from that show show up. And so granted, somewhere it's coming around. You know, I've it, the the soundtrack is definitely a classic. I've seen it you know, collected <clears throat> on various albums, um, and it's also tough because it's the the Mecha in Megazone are by modern standards generic '80s Mecha. I don't mean that in a, in a negative sense. It's just they, they ver- they're very much right. of a piece with that 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 period. So I right. think if I'm flipping through a magazine and if I stumbled across the mecha designs, I just flip right past it. It wouldn't be obviously, oh, what is this? Oh, Megazone two three. So I think it, that doesn't help it either. Yeah. Um, well, you had uh, Genesis Climber has mm-hmm. the armored armored bikes. Yeah. It does basically the same kind of thing, although mm-hmm. it's much more man portable. Mm-hmm. Than certainly the the <laughs> Bahamut Six, mm-hmm. um, but it's that in the eighties the transforming bike mm-hmm. in conjunction with transforming aircraft or helicopters or any other things mm-hmm. that was a a popular thing to do. And yeah, Definitely. you're you're right. I mean, the armored bike transforming into a a fighting suit, it would be hard to distinguish necessarily between that and the Garland. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also suspect Megazone is one of those things where. Um, it was it was probably because let me see here because um, Mos Peda was eighty two eighty three something like that, um, and I do feel like Megazone probably pioneered some of the mecha designs in this and and pioneered some of the visual yep. aspects of this, um, and then became aped so much that now we look back and we're like oh it's just that, um, where at the time it was just oh my gosh look at how gorgeous all this looks you know so history. Right. History does weird things. Um, a lot of a lot of things seeded by other things yeah. that we've that we've seen <laughs> going through our movies. There we go. Inspirations, little bits and pieces here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just good. I mean, this is great. This is what makes the medium so entertaining: is the familiar things and then mm-hmm. see people reinvent them. Hopefully better. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes not so much. Not but so much. Yeah. Hopefully better. Um, well, I've been thinking a lot about uh, Macross Plus recently, and that feels like a uh, something that very much, you know, pulled from this in terms of you know mysterious digital singer and big apocalyptic ending and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, I see where they're kind of coming with some of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, I got to be honest. I I would if someone if they were to actually in this kind of kind of you know, I'm actually a little bit of hopeful of this idea, and, and it just popped in my head, John, when you were talking about how you started seeing garlands. Um, you know, what if they decide to either reboot the series? Mm. I think I would watch it if they would. Yeah, able yeah. To, if, if, if if they would, you know, make it proper properly. Yeah. And you know, make a make it make it a television series and not a movie. And and no part four for the love of God, no, please don't. <laughs> just you know reboot the series i think i would watch that mm-hmm. totally. i think i would watch that i, I think I, I think i really would because i think that 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 nowadays there is the time the budgets mm. places for to be able to, to do that to so fill I, in I just, all the parts, oh, those are parts. that we need yeah mm-hmm. yeah oh and, and you know and 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 re and and talk about character design <laughs> redesign show those personality <laughs> yeah hey yeah um well, and and um, you know, if if you're a fan of mecha, particularly mecha animation, I would recommend this to you. I think you'll have a fun time with it. Um, yeah. It is very enjoyable, just purely as this sort of one-off mecha thing. There are other issues, as we've mentioned, with it. Yeah. But they're sort of you know separate from the whole mecha aspect of it. And uh, Genesis Climber was October '83 to March '84. Okay, gotcha. So yeah, just before. So it's it's all sort of swimming around in that in that stratosphere there. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what the first like motorcycle mecha is. Um, uh, first, T- ah. Tino's journey. No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> not that not motorcycle mecha necessarily. Yeah, um, and of course Google is not being very helpful. Anyway, um, <laughs> natural. Yeah, 
Um, anyway, that is that for Megazone 23. Thank you all for watching. We're not done yet, though. Um, we're going to take a quick break and then come back and talk a little bit about uh, anime news and such. I have a giveaway for Ooh. folks in the chat, so hang around in the Ooh. chat. Um, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with that. See you in a few. See you in a bit. <laughs>